Welcome to the Grounded Presence Podcast, a place for exploring authentic identity, deep community, and the ever-evolving spiritual journey. On this episode, I'm going to share with you a little bit from the archives of my own personal journey. And today it's going to be all about surrendering to the moment in this really cool way that uh, we can find new interpretations of old content uh, when we come to them with a new lens. Well, I'm not going to waste any more time on the intro here. Let's get right into it. Well, welcome to the show and thanks so much for joining me on this crazy journey of life that we're all on. And, you know, thanks for allowing me to share a small corner in your journey every couple of weeks. So you may have noticed that lately I've been doing these solo shows a bit more frequently. And that's because behind the scenes, I've started working on a larger scale project for the podcast. And it's really starting to take shape and gain some traction. And I'm just getting really excited about it. And I think you're really gonna dig it when it's all done. And it's, it's going to be a series of podcasts that I'm spending a bit more time recording and producing, just diving into one special topic with a lot of thought and a lot of intention. And it's early on in the process right now, but I'm thinking there might even be enough material here for a full official season one of the show. So I, I think that'd be pretty cool. We'll, we'll see what happens with it. So big things going on behind the scenes right now. And I know that that's the vaguest of vague teasers. But I just wanted to announce that because for you, that means over the next little bit, you'll be hearing from me on my own a bit more frequently, which, you know, honestly, I really prefer having conversations and bringing other voices onto the show. Um, as, as often as I can, but I do enjoy talking to you on my own as well. And I hope that you enjoy it too. So if you can bear with me for the next little bit, I've got some really good stuff in store. And as for today's show though, you know that one of my favorite topics to dive into is talking about evolving beliefs. And I just love love a good story that follows this trajectory of having a belief, encountering new experiences, and then coming into a completely new belief or just something that's, you know, very much altered from what you began with. And then just constantly watching the cycle repeat itself over and over again. So I'm going to dig back into the archives and share with you a little something of where I come from and just a little bit of uh, my story and some current experiences too, but I think we're going to have a lot of fun. So earlier this week, I had this really cool experience where I was just invited into this moment with my, my 16 year old self that just beautifully framed for me a change in the way that I interact with the world around me. So when I was 16, I was a church goer. My family went to a Baptist church and I was heavily involved in the church youth group. And nearly all the music that I listened to would be found at the Christian bookstore. And I was a good kid. I was really devoted to finding meaning in my life through my Christian faith. And that was a really great season of life. But since then, the way I engage with life and faith has just changed drastically, really. And I still got all my old Christian CDs and it's really fun to pop in one of those every now and again and just be tangibly taken back to this place of, of being 16, you know, whether it was me listening to these songs in a group uh, as, you know, as the church youth group went on a road trip in the church van or, you know, whether it was uh, 
uh, an experience of me listening to my Discman in, uh, in study hall wearing my those really cool Sony street style headphones, you know, went behind the head instead of over. <laughs> yeah, that, that's before earbuds were cool. Oh, but, but more currently in my life, my musical taste has spanned, you know, way past what the Christian bookstore has to offer. And one of my favorite places to find new music as of lately is Don Diablo's podcast. It's called Hexagon Radio. And, and what this is, is it's a weekly EDM dance music radio show. It's also available as a podcast. And it, it's just one of the best dance music podcasts out there, in my opinion. And I, I just love listening to this when I'm working or when I'm like cleaning the house or something or whatever I'm doing when I just want to get into a, a good good rhythm and a good flow. You know, dance music just does that for you. It does it for me, at least. So every week, it, it's pretty good. But there are a few episodes that are just these exceptional compilations of music to just like... Oh, you know, I heard them, they blew my mind. So I just, you know, save those to my iPhone and I just keep coming back to them time after time. And so one of these is episode number 186. It's one of my favorites. And there's this moment in particular, it's about a quarter of the way through the episode where Don plays this track. It's, it's called Shackles. Shackles in parentheses praise you by Jordan Margot and it specifically this one is the Jordan VIP remix version of the song and this is just th this song was just a total throwback for me so the song that's being remixed is actually a contemporary Christian song that came out in the early 2000s and it's a song that was uh, originally written by this Christian R&B duo, Mary Mary. And as far as Christian music goes, I, I got to say the original is actually a pretty good track. You know, it's like most Christian music or most popular Christian music. You can usually tell right away. It's like, oh, that's a Christian song. At least the stuff that they play on the Christian radio stations, you know, just by the way it's produced but this one this one's a little different it's uh it's got this good backbone of like a classic 90s r&b song and you know it's it's good it's got some swing to it it's yeah it's uh it's a good track <laughs> it's it's definitely christian in theme but there's no direct mentions of jesus or anything so if you're not paying attention it might even fly right under the radar unnoticed as a Christian song. It's kind of like boom, bottom, bump, bottom, bump, bottom, bump, bottom. Take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. <laughs> I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm starting to sing to you far too often on this podcast. Uh, maybe I should stop. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, it's a good song. I don't know that I did a good job of selling you on that as a catchy tune. But nevertheless, when this song came on Don Diablo's radio show, it was just like instant nostalgia for me. And where I knew this song specifically from was one of those wow compilation CDs and specifically this was the one that got released in 2001 and if you grew up in the evangelical church and had any Christian music at all I'm sure you had at least a few of these floating around in your CD collection but if you have no idea what I'm talking about here these wow CDs were just a compilation of each year's popular Christian music and they were essentially just like the Christian version of those, those now CDs 
yeah, everybody remembers those, right? The the now CDs that they would run TV commercials for with each year's pop hits on it, along with that infamous scrolling screen that showed each track as you got a little audio snippet as each title passed by. <laughs> Man, it's it's crazy how things have changed over the past twenty years, huh? <laughs> But, okay, back on track here. This dance music remix of the, the Christian song. Um, it was a really interesting experience hearing this pop up in an unfamiliar context and, you know, in, in a quote-unquote secular environment, right? Because I wasn't expecting it at all. And to make matters even more strange, it's a remake version of a contemporary Christian song in, you know, the, the secular sphere, which I've never seen something like that happen before. You know, to use a, a popular phrase, the pop culture was appropriating contemporary Christian culture. And that's never the way things have gone in in my experience you know it's always like contemporary christian culture always seems to be appropriating pop culture in this attempt to stay relevant in society but basically you know how that goes typically is uh just inserting jesus into the structure of you know a, a certain style of secular music and you know then the secular structure serves a religious purpose um, and if you grew up in evangelical church, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, it's like the the Christian T-shirt. You know, um, I think the one I've probably seen the most often is like, you know, it looks like <laughs> it looks like it's like a Reese's candy T-shirt, but when you look at it closer, you know, it's like the orange and it's got that cursive writing, but it doesn't say like Reese's. It says like Jesus in that cursive print, and underneath that, I think it says King of the Jews. You know, but uh, yeah, just all sorts of that, like the appropriation or whatever. I, I, honestly, I, I, I hate the word appropriation, but I'm using it here. <laughs> but I'm sure everybody's seen it. If you grew up in an evangelical environment, you're a lot more familiar with it than most people, but. We've all seen the cheesy Christian shirts. I think, uh, I think that could be agreed upon. But I've just never seen this happen, like someone cloning something from the modern Christian pop culture and then like inserting this, uh, this like secular artistic life into it, you know? Because just something about that process of taking you know, a piece of art or just taking something and then adding a religious context to it. It's like that naturally constricts whatever you're dealing with, whatever song, you know, or whatever, like uh, story structure, movie, book. By the nature, you're setting the boundaries of what you want to do based on something else. You know, so it just really chokes the artistic expression. But as I was saying, I've just never seen something from contemporary Christian culture get borrowed and inserted with this artistic life. And this dance music remix was just full of artistry and life. And when I heard it, it just made me want to get up and cut loose and get into my body and dance. And just the contrast of having this song from my days in Christian pop culture resurface in my life and as nothing less than this, this club banger of a song, it just, it just got me. Because back in the day, when I was enjoying this song within, from within the Christian culture, of course I enjoyed the original version of the song because it was catchy, you know, but my primary concern when it came to music in those days was content. Like I wanted all my music to be Christian in content. And I was concerned with 
setting myself apart from the rest of the world and its secular influence. And it might not make sense to you if you didn't grow up in a church, but I was really, when you boil it down, you know, trying to listen to the music that God wanted me to listen to. And, you know, looking back at it, like, there really is something beautiful about that season of dedication. Though there's, you know, there's a lot of negative stuff and baggage that comes, comes with it and stuff that you just got to work through. But, uh, but I think that's just part of living life. So again, here's this, this catchy song that just catches me completely off guard. thought it was catchy back in the day, but my main motivation behind listening to it was this head reason of essentially dividing the world up into us and them. And it, it, just this concept that's always thrown around in Christian circles, you know, of being in the world, but not of the world. But obviously, you know, it's... Did still appeal to my my primal nature of craving my primal nature that craves a rhythmic beat that just wasn't like the primary underlying reason right it was just like to find a good like primal beat that would put me in my body and now i'm confronted with this song that has all these remnants in my mind but that's not how it affects me at all it just makes me want to get up off my ass and dance and i was at work however so i didn't seize the opportunity but it was still a beautiful experience just enjoying a song that put me more in my body and i'm not gonna try to do a vocal rendition of the the dance music song here but you should definitely go check it out because i think it's really interesting but it just it just helped me breathe a little deeper into the moment and you know taste the air in my nose and just feel what's going on around me and inside me and be in the the flow of life and bear witness to it w without having any thoughts of you know hmm is this the media that I should be ingesting but uh, just being overtook by the beauty that lies before me and enjoying it. And it was just this rich, full circle experience for me. The, uh, the main chorus of that song that I sung for you earlier is, uh, take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. It's ironic too, right? Like take the shackles off my feet so I can dance. It's like, <laughs> In the original context, it's like, yeah, my spirit was a little bit like shackled by the underlying motivations for listening to the song in the first place, right? But and later on, it's it's just like the beat is taking the shackles off my feet, you know, of just being able to appreciate the moment more and suck me into mm, the beauty that's before me, like I just said a moment ago. But, uh, you know, what those lines of the song used to mean to me were, uh, take these shackles off my feet so I can dance. I just want to praise you. I just want to praise you. It's like, God, remove me from these struggles of being human so I can experience and connect better with you. But, you know, the energy of the song in my recent experience just brought me into this, this new interpretation which was a lot more like, this moment is beautiful. Just, just surrender to it. Don't spend time focusing on the shackles. Focus on, focus on that beautiful drive and desire to dance and enjoy the moment. Just really something, you know, I was being called into instead of something that I was cognitively processing and obviously there's plenty of time for that later because i'm cognitively processing it with you now but that's fun to have the experience and then process it cognitively instead of trying to cognitively process it 
to decide what experience you should dive into. Well, thanks for hanging out with me today here on episode 24. I'll be right back here in two weeks. And in the meantime, if you want to hear this song that I've been talking about, I highly recommend Hexagon Radio episode 186. And I'll post a link to that in the show notes. I'll also post a link to the single version of this remix as well. I think you'll enjoy it if you're into dance music at all. So I will be right back here in two weeks. Well, thanks for listening to the show today. If you have any thoughts, comments, or stories you'd like to share, I absolutely love hearing from you. And you can reach out to me by sending an email to thegroundedpresence at gmail.com. And if you enjoy the show, please make sure to rate and review it on iTunes. Those reviews will really help the show as it continues to grow. And lastly, make sure to stay connected with all the latest news about the show by finding The Grounded Presence on Facebook and Instagram, at The Grounded Presence. And now also on Twitter, at The Grounded Pod.